Uh, okay, I'm going to be talking about Apache Kafka and migrating to the cloud. So, are people familiar with Kafka? Like, pretty familiar? Yeah, okay. So, this is a pattern we've seen that's common among our customers, among users of Kafka. When th people think about migration to the cloud, you kind of think about, like, okay, how do I get one application? I pick it up and move it. Uh, but the problem for a whole company is a lot more complicated. Companies have uh, a bunch of applications, they're often intertwined. Uh, they communicate in different ways. They, they depend on each other, and they depend on intricate data flows. Uh, a lot of these are built to run on legacy infrastructure. So you know, still a large portion of the economy runs on mainframes. Right? So how do you get the stuff on the mainframe into the cloud? Well, that's not happening very quickly. And beyond that, the goal isn't just to forklift what you have and move it. The goal is to actually build for the cloud, to, to be able to get the agility that you get out of an elastic environment, to be able to use the data services that are available there. Um, so you don't just want to take what you have and move it. You want to actually rebuild as kind of cloud native applications. So how do people do this? Um, well, you, you kind of end up with this mess of interconnections. You end up with different systems talking to the cloud environments in different ways. You end up with different data flows that populate different databases or different data systems. You end up with API calls across environments. The reality is it's pretty hard to actually reason about this. What data is where? Is that data up to date in both of these environments? And how can I migrate which piece of my stack and at what time? What are the dependencies? And, and so the, the architecture we've seen emerging that starts to solve a lot of these problems and allow you to do a more graceful piece by piece migration is one that is centered around Kafka. And so you know, rather than having a, a zillion point to point connections, uh, people are using central Kafka clusters. They're publishing streams of data from their local on-premise environment. They're replicating that to the different cloud environments. They're loading those into data systems there, triggering applications off of it. And the reverse flow works as well. And so this allows them both to share data from databases as well as trigger application uh, service calls off of events. And, and this has uh, a number of advantages. You know, first of all, it's real time. You know, what you publish to Kafka in one environment can show up in all of your other environments uh, you know, near instantaneously. Uh, it's secure, so it gives you a central point to reason about what data is going where and how are you securing the communication mechanism. Rather than doing this for every system and every application, you can secure the central pipe. It's reliable, so even if you uh, lose connectivity between environments, by publishing to Kafka, that's persisted in the local environment, and it will replicate over when network connectivity comes back. It will do that uh, in order. Uh, and it, it's scalable. It will allow you to do this at company scale. You can have hundreds or even thousands of applications and systems that publish to these central clusters, and you can uh, you know, actually take that full feed across. And there's companies running Kafka at very large scale, with over trillions of events per day that flow through it. And, and Kafka itself is actually widely used not only for this use case, but, but um, dozens of other use cases. It, we know that it's in production at over a third of the Fortune 500, including some of the largest travel, banking, insurance, and telecom companies in the world. So how does this work in practice? Uh, I'll, I'll walk through an example here. We have an Oracle database. Maybe there's some ETL into Teradata, and we have one application. So I'll, I'll show how this would work for one application, and then I'll show how it would work for many. Um, so for one application, our goal is we want to be able to move this application into the cloud environment, and we want to be able to do it without breaking the flow into our analytics system, uh, Teradata, uh, because that's not migrating quite yet. You know, we don't have a Teradata in the cloud quite yet. That still remains an on-premise system. And so the steps are, first we set up this pipeline. Then we actually start to capture the changes from the databases, where there's off-the-shelf connectors for Kafka that allow you to do that without having to go change the application necessarily. And we, we make that data available in AWS. And this allows us to actually migrate the application. When we've done that, we can shut down the legacy version. But we can still populate that reverse data flow for our analytics purposes. And this works not just for one application, but it works for a whole environment of these. And the reason this is so complicated is because we don't just have two environments. We often have many. We have multiple data centers. We have multi-data center data flows. And we have multiple regions in AWS. So being able to simplify this onto a central bus that actually has a stream of what's happening dramatically simplifies the data flows between these environments. 
so that each uh, builder of an application can publish their data locally and not have to reason about the larger data flow of the company, not have to re reason about the different geographical regions, not have to reason about uh, who consumes these streams of data, not have to you know, worry about failure modes where one of the cloud environments is not available from the local environment or vice versa. And the advantage of this is not just how you're migrating applications to the cloud, uh, but this is actually an architecture which is incredibly prevalent even among companies uh, born native in the cloud. Uh, and so companies are building around Kafka as a basis for microservices, as a basis for real-time data flows, as a basis for sophisticated stream processing, as a basis for machine learning applications that are responding to events in the business. And, and so in a sense, this is the architecture you want to have when you get there. And uh, uh, Confluent, the, the company I'm the CEO of, uh, offers uh, Kafka as a service in AWS. So um, you can run Kafka yourself, and we'll help you with that. Uh, or you can get it as a fully managed service where we take care of all the operations, all the upgrades, and you pay based on your usage. Uh, and this is uh, generally available now. We guarantee the SLA, and we're obviously experts in this uh, as Kafka is the technology we created. And for your on-premise environments, we also, offer a, we also offer a software offering which helps you run, manage, monitor this, run the multi-data center portion of it, and actually instrument these data flows and prove that all your data has gotten from point A to point B. So you can actually reason about the question, is my cloud environment caught up to date with my on-premise environment and vice versa? How far is it lagging behind? And can I prove the integrity of all the data that's supposed to be there? And so that's it. If you're interested in this topic, we've done a more in-depth webinar uh, with Monsanto, which is a company that is uh, doing this actually at very large scale as part of their uh, cloud migration strategy across different cloud providers and their on-premise facilities. We also have a, a booth over there that you can go check out. We'd be happy to talk to you either about the cloud service, our software offering at Co uh, Confluent, uh, or this general pattern of cloud migration. And I'm, I'm happy to chat uh, now for anyone who's interested. Thank you so much.